What is going on, guys? Thank you so very much for stopping by the channel today. I got a little bit of extra for you. It is November 2nd, 2021. I am JD from New York, and this is Off The Script. I am not in the OTS venue today. I am on location in Atlantic City. Game 6 tonight, Braves and Houston I will be having some cold beverages and hopefully enjoying the game and a World Series victory tonight. I will be back in the venue with Jesse tomorrow for AEW Dynamite. But today, we're going old school for this OTS Extra. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. Let's try for a 1,000 likes on today's video. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications if you guys want to be up to date on all your WWE and AEW news and rumors. And make sure you guys go and check out all the other videos that you might have missed on the channel, including Off The Script episode 395 on Saturday and last night's live stream post show of what I thought was actually a decent Monday Night's Raw. Go and check all that stuff out. It is live on the homepage right now as we speak. Brock Lesnar. Let's start at the top with Brock Lesnar. Potential spoiler on Brock Lesnar's Royal Rumble opponent. Not WrestleMania opponent. Royal Rumble opponent. And it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. But it appears the seeds have been planted for Lesnar's Royal Rumble opponents before we get that second and hopefully last Roman Reigns match at WrestleMania. Now, last week on Friday Night SmackDown, Drew McIntyre issued an open challenge that led to a match with Mustafa Ali. McIntyre quickly won the match with a Kimura lock. And that is going to be the key to his next opponents in Drew McIntyre. Meltzer said this on the Observer website, and I quote, There was significance in Drew McIntyre using the Kimura lock, which is Brock Lesnar's signature submission move on Mustafa Ali, on SmackDown, end quote. That's all Meltzer said. So, according to Meltzer, the fact that Drew McIntyre won with a Kimura lock on Mustafa Ali is going to be a seed planted for his Royal Rumble match against Brock Lesnar on the road to WrestleMania. Now, prior to Crown Jewel, Roman Reigns beat Lesnar. Prior to Crown Jewel, Lesnar's last match was at last year's WrestleMania, in a losing effort to Drew McIntyre. But McIntyre has stated that he wanted to step into the ring with Brock Lesnar again at some point. And I'm assuming that is because he wants fans in attendance for that big time money match. When he won the championship, it was out of an empty gymnasium at the Performance Center in the middle of a pandemic. If that rematch is going to happen, then would be more likely for a non-WrestleMania pay-per-view like the Royal Rumble, since it looks like Lesnar versus Reigns and the rematch will be happening for the Universal Championship at WrestleMania. Now, I don't like this rumor. I don't like this rumor at all. And the one reason why I don't like this rumor is because Roman Reigns is going to need opponents. He's going to need opponents. There's a very short list of opponents right now for Roman Reigns on this historic Universal Championship reign that he is on. The only thing I like about this is that it may give us McIntyre and Reigns at a later date for the Universal Championship after Reigns gets through Lesnar. But I don't know how we continue to make Drew McIntyre look impressive and look strong and look like he's a legitimate threat to Roman Reigns if we're automatically throwing him into the fire with Brock Lesnar and inevitably he will lose because Lesnar is going to be the one to challenge Roman Reigns at WrestleMania and not Drew McIntyre. Or maybe WWE pulls this out of the bag and surprises us and has McIntyre beat Lesnar and then we get McIntyre versus Reigns at WrestleMania in a little bit of a different twist going into WrestleMania. I have no idea. But if you are thinking about Lesnar versus Reigns and you're wanting to throw Drew McIntyre in the middle of that for Lesnar to beat him on his way to Roman Reigns, how is that going to make Drew McIntyre a legitimate threat for Roman Reigns in the Universal Championship when that was the sole reason you moved him over to SmackDown in the first place via the draft? I don't really understand the logic in this. I don't. Now, WWE can clearly 
move on and make this make sense. But I don't think WWE is in the business to have things make sense. If you guys saw when Lesnar was destroying SmackDown and he threw a, re- a referee or two and he threw officials around and the whole locker room came out and then Adam Pearce indefinitely suspended him, right? One of the guys that was in that locker room tussle was Cesaro. Why aren't we doing, at the Royal Rumble especially, and giving it time to develop and creating a story around there and have Cesaro come out and be a focal point on television in the weeks leading to the Royal Rumble, almost picketing or lobbying for a match against Brock Lesnar? Why aren't we doing Cesaro versus Brock Lesnar in a feat of strength? Why aren't we doing that match? At the Royal Rumble. That seems like the perfect place for it to happen. I'd I'd willingly give them my money to see that match. We've never seen it before. And Lesnar, with this new contract, he's going to need new opponents. Who wants to see Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre again in WWE? None of the McIntyre-Lesnar stuff makes sense. It doesn't. It doesn't really make Drew McIntyre look good on his way to the Universal Championship because he's not beating Brock Lesnar a second time around. If Lesnar's going to be the one to challenge Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. And if Lesnar and McIntyre happens, you're automatically going to start thinking, well, this is nothing more than 50-50 booking prolonged over the last year and a half. Why would you give Lesnar his win back over McIntyre when the sole reason you had McIntyre win the Royal Rumble and the WWE Championship was to have was to have him beat Lesnar and be the guy? Why do you want to erase all that and have Lesnar get his win back? It's almost as if, all right, I paid you then. Now you owe me this time. I, I don't get it. Why are we doing these illogical creative moves? It doesn't make sense to me. Lesnar and Cesaro makes the most sense at the Royal Rumble. Have Lesnar go through Cesaro in a very good match and have Lesnar go on to WrestleMania and challenge Roman Reigns, fall to Roman again, and then McIntyre can remain strong, whatever you want to do, have him win the Rumble, have him win the Chamber, have him win whatever. Have him win whatever you want, but don't put him in the ring against Lesnar and have him inevitably lose. How is he going to look legit against Reigns at that point? I don't understand it. I don't like it. But apparently WWE is teasing McIntyre and Lesnar at the Royal Rumble because McIntyre broke out the Kimura lock on Mustafa Ali on SmackDown. And this is nothing more than Dave Meltzer speaking. I'm not sure if this is a legit plan, but I would not put it past WWE to have that subtly teased. And then all of a sudden, come January, we start getting Drew McIntyre coming out. Ha ha ha. I beat everybody in these open challenges. There's nobody nobody left on SmackDown. Out comes Brock Lesnar when he's about to come back from his suspension. And he challenges Drew McIntyre at the Royal Rumble. I don't like it. Cesaro is the guy. Cesaro is the one man that makes sense. Keep McIntyre strong and have him built up to be a legit threat to Roman Reigns only to fall in the end because nobody is or should be beating Roman Reigns. End of story. AJ Styles. Where is AJ Styles and why have we seen... On Monday Night Raw, reason why AJ Styles has been absent from WWE TV. Now, fans have noticed that AJ has been absent for the last couple of weeks. Styles' tag team partner, Omos, has appeared on the last two episodes of Monday Night Raw without Styles. Now, on Monday's Raw, Omos interrupted the Street Profits versus the Dirty Dogs, and he did a distraction on Montez Ford, which led to Dolph Ziggler and Big Bob winning over the profits. Meltzer noted on the Observer Radio last night that Styles is out of action with a non-injury medical issue. Meltzer says this, and I quote, AJ's got a non-injury medical issue. That's what I was told. I'm sure he's going to yell and scream about it at some point, but that is what they said to me, a non-injury medical issue, end quote. You know, I could rant about this for the next few videos, and I probably will, AJ needs to get the fuck out of this tag team with Omos. Omos is a lost cause. 
I don't know what people are expecting out of Omas. I don't know what they think Omas is going to turn into. He will never be a face of a brand. He will never be good enough to be a world champion or in a main event. AJ Styles needs to be competing for the WWE Championship, and he needs to be used in a way that is going to be most beneficial, not only to him, but to the WWE and whatever brand he is on. AJ Styles would be a perfect foil for not only Big E, but for whoever is the champion after Biggie, whether it's Rollins, whether it's Balor, whether it's Edge, these are matches that are money. And having AJ in a tag team is anything but money. So I don't know what the medical issue is or the non-injury medical issue as per Meltzer, but I hope he's okay. I hope he gets back soon because the show is better with AJ Styles healthy. Takeover. NXT Takeover is finished, or so I thought. WWE is planning the first NXT pay-per-view of the 2.0 era. I don't know why. I don't know where this is taking place. It's certainly not going to be anything reminiscent of the old takeovers. We'll probably get this in the NXT arena. Who wants to see NXT TakeOver in front of 300 fans? This is what killed NXT TakeOver during the pandemic. Every show took place inside the Performance Center. Doesn't really speak to me as TakeOver. It's nothing more than an extension of the TV taping, but uh, a couple of matches that feel big time. I don't, know, I don't know why they're even thinking about doing TakeOver. Why? Just stick to the special events and the themed NXT shows on Tuesday night. That's what I would do right now until the roster is at a point where you could take it back on the road and make some money off of it because people would be willing to buy tickets to come see this talent live on the big stage. I don't know what the rush is. Let's get the fucking show on the road first before we start talking about TakeOver in front of nine, ten thousand 10,000 people like we used to have it when it was good. WWE is thinking about a takeover for Sunday, December 5th. This would be the first takeover for the 2.0 era. This is according to Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics. He was unable, though, to confirm whether the show would have the takeover name. In late October, it was reported that WWE had updated their production calendar after the decision to nix TLC was made. And there was no NXT TakeOver pay-per-view listed internally for November or December. It's possible that WWE will no longer use the TakeOver name for these shows. And that's why it wasn't listed on the WWE's internal calendar. Or WWE simply made the decision recently to book a show since they won't have a main roster pay-per-view in the month of December. The last TakeOver we saw was TakeOver 36. And that was when Samoa Joe beat Karrion Cross for the NXT Championship. That was back in August, if I am a betting man, WWE, Vince, and Bruce have changed everything about NXT as we see it, as we know it, I would not be surprised to see the TakeOver name finished. I think Vince and Bruce will probably rename it something else as everything Triple H had a hand in, whether it's talent, a gimmick, or anything Triple H did creatively, down to the TakeOver name. They changed everything. Why wouldn't they change the name that Triple H thought was going to be his shoe-in to taking over WWE? That is not going to be the case. I would not be surprised if they change the name whatsoever. In fact, I actually welcome a change because anything they do with this current roster and this current show right now, the way we see it, and it still has that TakeOver name behind it, it's going to make an embarrassment of the TakeOver name that we once loved. Those were some of the best productions that WWE has ever put on. I don't know why you would embarrass the name TakeOver by putting a show on with this current roster and the current show that we currently see on Tuesday night. Get rid of it. Start new. You started new with 2.0. Start new with the branded NXT pay-per-views every single quarter. I don't want to see TakeOver ever again because it won't ever be anything close to what we remember. Bray Wyatt. This is the big story today, ladies and gentlemen. Bray Wyatt is in Hollywood, whether he's filming for AEW or whether he's filming a Hollywood project or 
whatever the man is doing, he's letting his creativity run free after finally becoming a free agent, no longer tied to WWE since October 30th of 2021. There was a report that came out that stated upper management, <laughs> Bruce and John, laryngitis, laryngitis. You know, the upper management level fuckbags that surround Vince McMahon's nutsack on a daily basis. They said that Bray Wyatt deserved to be fired. Now, there was a ringside news report that stated this. And a WWE source that spoke to them said this about Wyndham Rotunda. And I quote, not being an apologist or a WWE defender. I'm just telling you like it is. If you were running a business and Wyndham was on your payroll, you'd release him too. Between his backstage antics and the way he handled himself when making millions and millions while medically flagged, he really deserved to be released, end quote. Now, before I move on to what Wyndham said in retaliation to that report, I find it funny how this upper level management source said, oh, not to be an apologist or WWE defender, because that's exactly what you are. It's exactly what you are by stating what you just said here. If you were running a business, Wyndham would not be on your payroll. You'd release him too. Really? That's funny because he was the number one merchandise seller in all of WWE. And if it's... Now, correct me if I'm wrong. If it's still the case right now, I think Wyndham's merchandise, whether it's on sale or not, probably not because WWE knows they could get away with selling this shit to the fucking geeks out there. Still selling Wyndham merchandise, Fiend Bray Wyatt merchandise on WWE Shop. He was the number one merchandise seller for months in the entire company, but you want to release him. You'd release him too, says this source, really. You know, with Wyndham selling that type of merchandise, he's only making you more money. Why would you get rid of somebody like that that's a cash cow no matter how bad of an attitude he has backstage with politics and the way he handled himself and he's making millions and millions and had this terrible attitude. Has anybody asked themselves why he had a terrible attitude? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. You always go to, oh, if he was on your payroll, you'd fire him too. Well, why did he act the way that he acted supposedly from Bruce and John Lourdes? Why did he act that way? Is it because you took his creation and his character and deviated away from everything he wanted to do? Was it because you took his creation and his character and tried to write for someone that had an entire vision, a plan in place with what he wanted to do? Was it because you guys micromanage everything and you got to sick your fucking claws in everything and just take over everything because you think you know best. The talent can't have any say, blah, 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 creatively. How many people out there genuinely believe that they think the way that they do? Why does Wyndham all of a sudden have an attitude problem? Is it because he didn't want to give you full reign over everything? He was so proud of what he did that he fought tooth and nail about everything that you wanted to change in regards to his character. How about keeping him off TV and maybe giving his fucking gimmick to a female who played it miserably? None of these things would upset a normal human being, though, right? No, 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 you, you wouldn't want him on your payroll, says Bruce Pritchard. And John, Lourdes, give me a fucking break. That man had every right to be upset and cause backstage antics. You drove him to do that. I don't blame him whatsoever. Can you imagine the amount of work that that man put in to what he wanted to share with us and create only for you to change it? Who wouldn't be upset? Then comes the WrestleMania shit where everybody thought he was going to win and then he lost and then remained off television. 
Guy got burned alive. Guy got buried by Goldberg in Saudi Arabia. Guy was a one-week transitional champion, losing it to uh, Goldberg, winning it back from Strowman, only to have Roman Reigns come back out of nowhere because all of a sudden he's ready to come back to work. Fuck Bray Wyatt. Are you fucking serious? Look at this man's career as the fiend and tell me he wouldn't be upset or shouldn't be upset. Man, oh man, Bruce is a fucking can. Bruce is stage nine cancer. Never mind stage four. Holy shit, Bruce has got to go. He really does. He deserved to be released. I think Bruce deserves to be fucking fired himself. Never mind Wyndham. Now, your loss is going to be AEW's gain. I want to see everybody fucking complain in WWE. I want to see all the fans of WWE, the defenders and the apologists. So another WWE ex-disgruntled employee joining AEW. Yeah, I want I want to see people complain. I want to see people complain. You wouldn't pick up Wyndham Rotunda? If he was a free agent, that's what I want to know. This man was fucking destroyed. No wonder the guy had fucking backstage politics and antics all over the place. Look at what you drove him to do and drove him to be. AEW will show everybody how it is a home for talent that want to be creatively free and wrestle at the same time. And then WWE at the end of the day will deny, ah, it's whatever. Yeah, we'll give AEW some more talent. Oh, Wyndham, he was a nobody anyway. He can't wrestle. He was out of shape. He was fat. Whatever the fucking excuse is going to be, Bruce, like you have any fucking reason to call someone fat. Give me a fucking break, man. You look like a walking watermelon the way you fucking look, bro. Get the fuck out of here. They will be eating their words. And this is the one thing I love about it all. Wyndham is the type of guy that's going to leave WWE because he got fired for unknown reasons. He, budget cut reasons, sure. He will go to another company and he will succeed at a high level. And I take great joy in watching him succeed, making WWE look like a bunch of fucking fools. That's exactly what's going to happen. I live for that. And that is going to be such a huge high for him. That is going to be fuel like you've never seen before me. You don't think this guy's got something to prove going somewhere else to work? You don't think this guy's coming up with concepts that are going to blow everything he did in WWE away? Man, oh man, you must be fucking sick in the head if you don't think this guy's going to come back bigger and stronger and more motivated than ever before. I can't wait. I don't know when we see him, but I can't wait. Wyndham Rotunda, Bray Wyatt, reacted to this story with a gif of The Rock giving a whatever look. And then he followed up with a tweet saying this, and I quote, Now that we have Johnny and Bruce's opinion, I would like to share mine soon. I can't wait. That is going to be the one interview out of everybody that's been released that is going to be the most sought-after interview in wrestling. Wyndham, telling his side of the story about what exactly happened and why The Fiend was destroyed in WWE. Difficult, he was having issues being difficult. There's a reason why he was being difficult. It's because you fucked him up. He had every right to be difficult, and I will always side with the talent in a situation like this. I can't wait to see him come back bigger, better, and stronger than ever before to shut up people like Bruce Prichard, John Laurinaitis, and Vince McMahon. It is going to be a great day when we see this man or when we see this man come out on AEW television. It is going to be something that is going to be remembered for a very, very long time. Guys, I'm getting out of here. Thank you so very much for all of your support. This is Off The Script, and I'm JD from New York. Hit that thumbs up down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. Hit that subscribe button down below. And go check out all the other videos that you might have missed on the channel. I will be back with Jesse on Wednesday nights for Dynamite inside the OTS venue. We got a lot to talk about, including AEW having their first major TNT special. Battle of the Belts is coming for all Elite Wrestling. We'll talk about that on Wednesday nights here on the live stream post show 
on Off The Script. Until then, guys, have a great Tuesday. Go Braves. Hopefully, we end it today. And I'll see you back with Jesse tomorrow night on Off The Script. I'll see you guys later.